Okay class, today we're in section 3.2, graph linear equations. Section 3.2, graph linear equations. Before, you plotted points in a coordinate plane. Now, you will graph linear equations in a coordinate plane. Key vocabulary, standard form of a linear equation, and linear function. An example of an equation in two variables is 2x plus 5y is equal to 8. A solution of an equation in two variables, x and y, is an ordered pair, x, y, that produces a true statement when the values of x and y are substituted into the equation. Example 1. Standardized test practice. Which ordered pair is a solution of 3x minus y is equal to 7? a. 3 and 4 b. 1, negative 4 c. 5, negative 3 D, negative 1, and negative 2. Solution. Check whether each ordered pair is a solution of the equation. Test. 3 and 4. First, write the original equation. 3x minus y is equal to 7. Then substitute 3 for x and 4 for y. So in place of x, we're going to put 3. In place of y, we'll put 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 does not equal 7. Next, write the original equation again. 3x minus y is equal to 7. Substitute 1 for x and negative 4 for y. So we're going to test 1, negative 4. So in place of x, we put 1. In place of y, we put negative 4. 3 times 1 is 3. A negative times a negative is a positive. So this really says 3 plus 4. So what is 3 plus 4? 7. Does 7 equal 7? Yes. So 3, 4 is not a solution, but 1, negative 4 is a solution of 3x minus y is equal to 7. The correct answer is B. Graphs. The graph of a function in two variables is the set of points in a coordinate plane that represents all solutions of the equation. If the variables in an equation represent real numbers, one way to graph the equation is to make a table of values, plot enough points to recognize a pattern, and then connect the points. When making a table of values, choose convenient values of x that include negative values, zero, and positive values. Example two, graph an equation. Graph the equation negative two x plus y is equal to a negative three. Solution, step one, solve the equation for y. So in other words, it's almost like working a literal equation like back in section 2.8. You got to get this y by itself. So we got a negative 2x plus y is equal to a negative 3. I want to get the y by itself. That means this negative 2x has to go. So what should I do? I should be adding a positive 2x to each side. So here I should be, I should have a positive 2x. And over here I should have a positive 2x. All right, now after doing so, a negative 2x when combined with a positive 2x that goes to zero. So my y comes down by itself. On this side, I have a negative 3 plus a 2x. Well, those terms are not alike. So all I can do is represent them. And I write them as 2x minus 3. Don't forget. That 2 there is positive, that's why it's positive here, and that 3 there is negative. So my equation then is y is equal to 2x minus 3. Okay, step 2. Now I want to make a table by choosing a few values for x and finding the y values. Notice what I mentioned to you earlier. Pick values that are spread across negative, 0, and positive. And normally these are the numbers that we use. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now we plug those into our equation to figure out our y values. Okay, now after uh, writing our input values or our domains, and we plug those back into the equation, we come out with when x is a negative 2, y should be 7. When x is negative 1, we should come out with 5, with a negative 5. By the way, when x is negative 2, that should be a negative 7. When x is negative 1, negative 5. When x is 0, y is a negative 3. When x is 1, y is a negative 1. And when x is 2, y is 1. All right, we're going to help you out for those who may be a little bit confused by showing you just a couple of them. 
So we write down our original equation, y is equal to 2x minus 3. Our first x value we said was a negative 2. So in place of x, we put negative 2. Now 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. So now what is a negative 4 minus 3? That's going to be a negative 7. That's how they got that negative 7 there. All right, next we got y is equal to 2 times a negative 1 minus 3. So now what's 2 times a negative 1? That's a negative 2. So now what's a negative 2 minus 3? That's a negative 5. Next, we got a value of 0. So when y is 0, we end up with, I mean, excuse me, when x is 0, we end up with 2 times 0, which is 0. And then what is 0 minus 3? 0 minus 3 is equal to a negative 3, as you see there. All right, let's plug in 1. Now, we can probably do that mentally. 2 times 1 is 2. And then 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. And then last but not least, 2 times 2 is 4. And then 4 minus 3 is 1. So now we have all our values and we're ready to plot. So step 3, plot the points. Notice that the points appear to lie on a line. Step 4, connect the points by joining a line through them. Use arrows to indicate that the graph goes on without end. So in other words, they're saying here is use arrows because the graph continues out this way and it continues out this way. Now, once again, uh, make sure that you know how to graph. For example, negative 2 and 7. When x is a negative 2, y is a negative 7. So negative 2, 1, 2. Negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. When x is a negative 1, that's negative 1 for x. We count it over negative 1. Uh, y is a negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go, negative 5. When x is 0, we're ready at the origin. And y is negative 3. 1, 2, 3. When x is 1, y is a negative 1. We go down 1. When x is 2, y is a positive 1. Notice that everything stays in a straight line. If one of your points were off, that tells you that you did something wrong mathematically when figuring out your values right here. Linear equations. A linear equation is an equation whose graph is a line such as the equation in example 2. The standard form of a linear equation is ax plus by is equal to c. ax plus by is equal to c. Where a, b, and c are real numbers and a and b are not both zeros. Consider what happens when a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. When a is equal to 0, the equation becomes by is equal to c or y is equal to c over b. Because c over b is a constant, you can write y is equal to b. Similarly, when b is equal to 0, the equation becomes ax is equal to c, or x is equal to c over a. And you can write x is equal to a. Example 3, graph y is equal to b and x is equal to a. Graph y is equal to 2 and b, x is equal to a negative 1. Solution. For every value of x, the y value is 2. The graph of an equation, y equals 2, the graph of the equation, y equals 2, is a horizontal line, 2 units above the x-axis. So once again, all they're saying here is when you see a graph for y is equal to a single number, you know that graph is 1, going to be horizontal, and that goes against the way you used to think in the y. You used to think in the y of being vertical. But in this case, they're saying y is equal to 2. That means no matter what the value for x, y will be 2. So in this case, when x is 3, y is 2. When x is 0, y is 2. When x is a negative 2, y is 2. If x were a negative 3, y would be 2. If x were 2, y would be 2. If x were 4, y would be 2. So when you plot those points, you come out with a horizontal line. Always. Now, likewise, when x is equal to a negative 1, that means no matter what the y value is, x is always negative 1. So when you see a graph that says x is equal to a number, you know that graph is going to be vertical. It's going to be up and down. We know what think of x is going this way, but this is a special case. When x is a negative 1, 
That means no matter what value exists for y, that x value will always be negative 1. For example, here we got x is negative 1 when y is 2. x is negative 1 when y is 0. x is negative 1 when y is negative 1. If you plot those points, you will come out with a vertical line. It takes a little practice to get used to it. It takes a little practice to get used to it. For example, if I gave you, if I said graph x was equal to 2, that means you will come right here, locate 2, and then make a vertical line going right down through 2. Of course, your line will be a lot straighter than that, but you make a line going right down through 2. Why? Because no matter what the y value is, the x value is always 2. For example, let's look right here. Let's see, 1, 2, 3. Right here, x is 2, y is 3. x is 2, y is 2. x is 2, y is 1. x is 2, y is 0. x is uh, 2, y is a negative 1, and so forth. Key concept, equations of horizontal and vertical lines. y equals b, that means y can be equal to any singular number. When y is equal to b, you know that the line is going to be horizontal. The graph of y equals b is a horizontal line. The line passes through the point 0, b. The graph of x equal a is a vertical line. The line passes through the point a, 0. So what this is, is this says x is equal to a certain number. doesn't matter what it is. It's just as soon as you see that number, you locate that number, and you make a vertical line up and down. Identify a function. The function y equals 2 is a constant function. The graph of a constant function is a horizontal line. Linear functions. In example 3, y is equal to 2 is a function, while x is equal to negative 1 is not a function. The equation ax plus by is equal to c represents a linear function provided that b cannot equal 0. That is, provided the graph of the equation is not a vertical line. If the domain of the linear function is not specified, it is understood to be all real numbers. The domain can be restricted, as shown in example 4. Example 4. Graph a linear function. Graph the function y is equal to a negative 1 half x plus 4. With domain x is greater than or equal to 0, then identify the range of the function. All right, so here they're saying whatever values we pick for x, they have to be greater than or, or equal to zero. That means the smallest value x can be is zero. Now also notice, early on they told us to pick values that made sense for the function that we're working with. See here, x is being multiplied by one half. So you want to pick numbers that are easy to work with one half. In other words, you want to pick numbers that are, that are easily divisible by two. So in this case, zero, 2, 4, 6, and 8. These are easy to multiply by 1 half. Alright, so now let's take a quick look-see at the table. So, when x is 0, we get a negative 1 half times 0. A negative 1 half times 0 is 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. When x is 2, a negative 1 half times 2 will give us a negative 1. 1 half times 2 is 1, and then it's negative, so a negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Next we get 1 half times 4. Well, what's 1 half times 4? Half of 4 is 2. Don't forget that negative sign. So that's a negative 2. What's a negative 2 plus 4? 2. Next we get 6. What's half of 6? 3. But don't forget, that's a negative 3. So a negative 3 plus 4? 1. 8 is our next value. What's half of 8? 4. Don't forget, that's a negative 4. A negative 4 plus 4, that's going to give us 0. Now, don't forget, you are expected to show your steps as to how you come up with the y values. Next, we're going to plot the points. And by now, everyone should be familiar with plotting the points. Step 3, connect the points with the ray because the domain is restricted. Step four, identify the range. From the graph, you can see that all points have a y-coordinate of, of, of four, 
So the range is the function y is less than or equal to 4.